that we should be suspended so uncomfortably thus. Uh, my apologies, ladies, sir. Forgive a mumbling booby. <laughs> you are too kind. You carry on. When you are quite ready. Without question, of the finest example of the 
of the relative specific gravity of two bodies, the male and the female. If the partners stand with their bodies erect, so, their arms, so, their lips connected, so, it will be observed that the female body, its relative specific gravity law, tends to fall backwards. So, the male body falling in a symmetrical curve, <laughs> thus forming, amongst other things, the most natural and complementary juxtaposition <laughs> of the male and female bodies. Oh, I see, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Simple child. Shall we proceed somewhere else? <laughs> As my faithful friend, would you consider attempting one of our dear masters to experiment? Even though it may be somewhat ahead of our curriculum. Or oh, anything for you, Kunaganda. It concerns the relative the specific gravity of the male and female bodies. Then naturally I'm at your service. Well, you put your arms around me so. Let's give it to make contact so. It is impossible. And yet for months I've been dreaming of such a concept. Oh, she stands to our way, Dr. Pangloss. See, it is working. My specific gravity draws me to the ground. Mine too. <laughs> oh, cool and Gonda, it is clear we were put on the earth to complement each other. In the holy marriage bond. My God, what is he doing to my sister? God, dear. Oh, you can't do that to my sister. Father. Father, look at it! Maximilian, this had better be worth it. What is the meaning of this outrage? Oh, it's a great sir. How dare you! Father, I love him! And I love her! Oh, we'll be married at once! Married? Married? My daughter! Silly bastard! Curses on this day when my Christian charity bid me give asylum to the offspring of my slattish sister! Out! 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 But, but sir! Out, I say! Dare to set foot in wet failure again, and I'll be strung from the highest gibbet! <laughs> the honour of our family is restored. And as for you, you evil rats, it will be a long time before any suitors turn <coughs> an amorous eyes on your unstained earth. <laughs> and in saying this, she took a great pair of shears and cut off Cunagonda's beautiful flaxen hair. Ah! Oh, poor Cunagonda and poor Candide, cast out never to see the beautiful Cunagonda again. Even as they spoke, 
The vicious Bulgars were swarming across the Westphalian border, slaughtering and ravishing the populace, surging closer, even closer to the doomed castle of Thunder Ten Tronk. Almighty God, most merciful, tender and forgiving, I pray that you, in your infinite mercy, will destroy the haven Bulgar invaders before our most precious brick of my castle be toppled. Oh dear lords, my gowns, my jewels, my beautiful shoes, what is to become of them? Oh, me. Almighty God, was blessed with the incomparable gift of great beauty. See to it that whatever holocaust occurs, my figures might escape this figment. For my virus sake, of course. They say that the Bulgar army are beasts and barbarians and leave a trail of ravishment and destruction in their way. <laughs> they say their regiments are a thousand strong. Dear Lord! Paquette, run and fetch my cart. <laughs> oh, with Paquette, watch out for the Bulgar Yes, madam. No, <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Send my beloved Cardiff back to me. Surely he and only he can save me from this dreadful fate of ravishment. Prayers, even in the best of all possible worlds, are not always answered. And at the height of the battle, the vicious Bulgars, their swords flashing, burst into the chapel. <laughs>
Have you fallen in the taking of Westphalia? No. For currently it was still in a sack, as a matter of fact. His two captors, having been slaughtered quite by chance, as they were eating their breakfast on the morning of the attack on Castle Thunder Tentrock. Eventually, he was liberated from the sack by a band of strolling actors who, as luck would have it, needed a youth to play the female parts. <laughs>
You know, he's a dinner, sad tale to bear. But such gentle beauty and such disrepute. Just look at my dress. Far away as a whore, for despite all fine adornments, tis clear to see no a faulty game, and even more faulty fashion. Oh, hey, girl! Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> now, sweet lady, tell me your tale. And so, Hoonagonda recounted the woeful tale of her miserable decline, and the extremely wealthy merchant, for that was indeed what he was, promised to take her into his care. Indeed. He took her a great deal further, to Lisbon, in fact, where he showered Kunagonda with trinkets and adornments, and where he clearly planned that soon Kunagonda would forget all about the lowly Condide and devote herself entirely to his pleasure. <laughs> function by erupting. And it was on this very day that Condide was washed up more dead than alive onto the shores of a fishing village at the very heart of the earthquake. <laughs>
more blasphemous against the Holy Mother Church. Why not? This man, this decaying limb of Satan, denied the existence of original sin. Oh! Hang him. Yes. Yes. And what about him? What did he do? Hear your holy evidence, this vile cook did you think? Yes. He listened to him! Oh. Yeah. Shall we let the sinner go or try him? Try him! Very well, try him. Is the culprit innocent or guilty? Guilty! Shall we burn this vile transgressor? Yes, sir. Or flog him first? Then that's what we'll do.
yourself? <laughs> sir! Sir! I killed a fellow human being! I have nothing but love in my heart. Do not reproach yourself, Condit. It is well timed. For I do not feel I can be resisted in our barks any longer. And now I am free at last! Madame, may I respectfully remind you that having killed the richest merchant in the entire country, if we are caught here as we are now with his corpse, none of us will be free for much longer. A wise old lady! Um, but what should we do? Flee! Flee? To Cadiz. Cadiz? There are two horses in the stables. Painful though it will be for me with only one buttock, I shall ride behind. Young man, fish the jewels, the trinkets of the safe. Praise be to God that my lady should also was a man of great wealth and property. Would I have been that lucky? Hurry! And now we do. Whilst we still have the advantage of the crew of the night. Um, excuse me, madame. But did I hear you say only one daughter? A time may come, young man, <laughs> then I will please your ears with the tale of my many calamities. But that time is not now. We flee. To the stables. <laughs> A 
dress. And sympathy. Very well. I shall proceed to set your hair on end. I need music. Music on which bell. Excuse me, ladies. Are you angels? Well, your touch 
so soft. I, I, I might think I'm in heaven. Am I dead? to 
adopted St. Francis, being installed in a somewhat precarious niche. You'll hear more about that later.
two of the most affable sheep with jewels and ingots, once again they set off, fighting their way through trackless jungle, down dizzy precipices, across dismal swamps. <coughs> Undaunted, however, after indescribable hardships, they arrived at where else but Cartagena! Where they were to be reunited with an old friend. But I'm surprised at my own capacity. 
capacity for suffering. How difficult it is to trust now, well, Dr. Pangos' theory implicitly that all is for the best. Is it for the best that we are Without our gold? And without Colonel Gardner. Thank you. 
Maximilian, my search is at an end. Cunegonde and I had to be married. Married? You? My beloved sister, Cunegonde? Indeed. My sister to a bastard. I will not tolerate such a demeaning act of her part. What? Uh, my sister will marry no one but a baron of the empire. Oh, my lovely brother, I beg of you, please! Never! Why must you be so stubborn? Do I not deserve your favour? I freed you from eternal servitude and you repay me with this! Now my brother! Has a salt sea I made us all lose our reason? Look at your sister Cunegonde. We found her no more than a washerwoman scrubbing with her bare hands in the sea. She is ugly and Candide has the goodness to marry her. Why must you stand in that way? Never shall it be said that I allowed my family name to be tied by such despicable infamy. Your family name? You pump us out I will kill you all over again if I make my anger have its way. Everybody. You can kill me or you like. But you would not mind my sister as long as I live. Ah! <laughs> oh, not dead again! <laughs> Was I? Why, oh, yes, I remember something of the sort, but pardon me. A 
seeker, never strive for knowledge, for it is beyond man's scope. Never think for in thought, fly all the ills of mankind. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be hired with my meditations, and I find this part a tricky ask. But, sir! What is it now? Oh, Doctor Pangloss, even if you don't remember us, please tell us what we must do. For well, now, shut up and go away!
before it's gone To make some sense of life That neither pure nor wise nor good will do